Bailey Chamblay, welcome to A Putnam and the Women in Golf feature that we're just starting. Thank you. I'm honored. I'm your first guest, right? You are. You are. We are so excited to have you. I mean, you're kind of an icon in the golf industry, especially from a women's standpoint in your career. We're so excited to get to hear how you've gotten into the sport and some other fun questions just to get to know you. So thanks for your time and being here. Absolutely. And thank you for getting into the golf apparel space. We need That's more right. more women in the space and more apparel options. I'm sure I speak for everyone in golf. So thank right. you for all that you're doing. Yes. Thanks. It'll be fun. Well, let's get started. We'll jump into some of the questions we have. And I think where we'll start is just tell us how you got into golf and who introduced you to the sport. Sure. Um, I grew up an athlete, uh, played pretty much every sport under the sun, except for golf. I have two older brothers. So, you know, we were just always outside playing, throwing baseballs, basketballs, whatever you name it. Um, I was in the middle of my freshman basketball season in high school when I was 14 years old. And um, I noticed that I had some knee issues. Sometimes I couldn't even walk without falling to the ground. My knees would just give out on me and I would all over. Um, that's not normal. No. So he <laughs> took me to the doctor and they diagnosed me with something called osteochondritis desiccans, which is a genetic degenerative cartilage disorder in both of my knees. Um, so I had knee surgery and the doctors advised me if you wanted a quality of life for the rest of your life. They said probably slow down and basketball maybe isn't for you, yeah. um, which at that point I did want to go play collegiate basketball. So, um, you know, it s sort of shook my world when I was 14, but I was like, okay, that's fine. I do want quality of life. Uh, <laughs> my father had grown up in Oklahoma. He taught himself how to play golf. He caddied at Southern Hills um, as a kid. So he was always into golf. He always wanted to get me into golf. And so after the doctors advised, I leave running and jumping and pivoting and all those things that are hard <laughs> on your joints alone, yes. I said, okay, dad, teach me how to play golf. Like, let's do this. So my father taught me how to play when I was 15, uh, the summer before my sophomore year in high school. And then I ended up um, just switching to golf and playing yep. just that. And I got a scholarship and played um, at Old Dominion in Norfolk, That's Virginia. Amazing. And the rest is history. I mean, I'm I'm so entrenched in golf. You are, you are, and it's kind of a quite a journey, especially at a young age, to have, you know, a medical issue like that and have to do with surgery, and then certainly shifting into a completely different sport. But it also says something about you that you're athletic, obviously enough to get to the level of playing in that collegiate space at Old Dominion, which is so cool. Um, you know, I think in general with golf, what what draws you to the sport? And I think it's more about what do you love about it today? I am obsessed with golf. I mean, it's, it's what I play. It's what I do with my free time. It's where I travel. It's where I vacation. Yeah. It's my favorite clothes to wear. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't say half of my closet is golf clothes because I have <laughs> a lot of other clothes, but I mean, a, a large portion of my closet yep. is right. Golf attire. Um, I, I just think it's the greatest thing in the history of the world. Um, yeah. you can go with friends, you can go with your significant other, you can go alone. This may sound crazy. I love playing golf alone. Just Do you? Like, out for an evening. <laughs> oh my gosh. I it's love peaceful, it. I'm sure it's peaceful. Yeah. You just, it's just you and the golf ball and the Good golf for course, your mental right? health. Like, yeah. Yes, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a game, it's an aspirational game. So you're mm -hmm. always whether you achieve it or not, right? You always think that like there's oh, something yeah. better out there. There's a lower score. There's a better shot. You can always pull it off. So and it's, it's such a like, challenging sport. That's what I always say. You can be as athletic as possible, but golf is still challenging. Oh, it humbles the, <laughs> it the best of us. Humbling. It yes, absolutely it is. does. It yes. is. I love that. I would say outside of golf, and I know obviously you probably were at the point of being able to master the sport you know, basketball, but is there any other sport you think about that you wish you could master? Um, so it's not exactly a sport, but I was also, when I grew up, um, I was a cheerleader for a mm -hmm. few years, like in high school and middle school and we moved. And so I never, I never mastered a round off back handspring. <laughs> and that's something that still like sits with me today. That's and I funny. even said to my husband within the last few years, I was like, what if I started taking tumbling classes? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, you know, and like learned how to do Just a backhand swing. 
And he's like, what are you it's like, are you crazy? About? Yeah. Like the most random thing. And I'm like, well, not really. It was like a childhood dream that I never right. achieved. Oh, that's too funny. So it's stuck with you. I love it that. It has, but I don't know that it's going to happen, but that's also okay. Right. That is okay. You, it sounds like you're mastering some other things, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My so, time would be spent better elsewhere, probably. Right. Like working right. on my short game. Like That's that. right. Don't we all need it? I know. <laughs> and I'm a very casual golfer, so, and I always have been. Never played competitively, but um, like you said, there's always something to improve about your game. So, yes. Makes it fun, though. Um, so, this is kind of into maybe some off golf topic questions, but in general, who do you look up to the most? Um, I mean, my mother, she mm -hmm. was our breadwinner. Um, yeah. all growing up, she was a CFO of a nonprofit organization, um, and also a CPA. So she Girl. just was always very driven and, and a wonderful mother as well, yeah. um, you know, at, at home. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So she just sort of like laid the foundation of like hard work and she's yeah. silly and fun and so loving and kind. And, you know, she That's still true. sends Randall and myself, for example, Easter's coming up. She'll send us a basket of goodies. We're, mm -hmm. we're adults, right? Like, oh yeah. But she'll sign it from the Easter bunny. Oh, like my I mother still that. does that. Oh, I love that. Like, <laughs> and she'll, you know, she'll call it. and she'll be like, cause Brandon and I travel a lot as yeah. you know, or imagine. Yeah. And she'll call and be like, so I'm the Easter bunny's assistant and the <laughs> Easter bunny wants to know where will you be on oh, Easter? That's where should I send the package? Oh, so, that's so um, sweet. my mother is, she's quite the gem. Yeah, it sounds like it and holds on to that kind of innocence and that role of mother despite your age, right? That's yes. cool. I love that. <laughs> I love Which that. Which also means my age is just a, little a number, bit right? It is. It is. I know. My mom always said you get to 40, you get to count back. So <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> Oh, true, I like that. I didn't we'll know that. To it. I'll I know. Keep in mind. Yeah. Right? So let's say, what about your biggest superstition? Are you a superstitious person? So I, right, like I've, that's a question in golf, right? That happens a lot, <laughs> right. all the time. Yeah. And I remember years ago on morning drive, that was like a topic we were going to talk about. And so I was thinking about it and I was like, I'm not very superstitious with golf, <laughs> but then I swear sometimes when I'm playing golf or doing something, I'm like, oh wait, that is, I kind of am. But then I always forget. I'm like, what am I? The other yeah. day, um, the other week was our club championship. Mm -hmm. and I, it was, you had to qualify and you got seated and then you played match play, blah, blah, blah. And I fixed my hair in these like sort of pigtails, but they had like whatever. I, love it. I think I saw them. Yeah. Yeah. And, Super um, good. so I played great the first round and then I was like, <laughs> Oh, I, and you know, it was like February. So it was still yeah. cool. It's not like I'm sweating and like super uh -huh. gross, but probably people think this is gross. Anyway, <laughs> I slept with my hair Reality. like that and I wore yep. it the same way the next day. And it played great again. Oh, all like, right. I was like, okay. But then, I mean, my hair, it's not that comfortable to sleep on. <laughs> no. And I was like, no. it kind of is gross. And my hair is not what's really like making me play well. So That's then I funny. showered, washed it. And I didn't, I didn't advance past the next round. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So it does, you're like, I should have kept with it. I should have kept the hair, but <laughs> you do. I think we all can, whether you're superstitious or not, like, that thought process goes through. Like, what did I have yesterday that I need today? Right. What can I hold on to? But yeah, that's funny. So nothing major, nothing major. I do believe in the okay. rule of threes though. Like oh, all right. the other day. Like I lost my phone. I went snowboarding recently. I lost my phone on the mountain. I have this, it's uh, irrelevant, but I have this little um, pot holder uh, or what you put your spoons mm -hmm. and utensils on right when you're cooking. Oh yeah. Um, and it broke. Did it break? <laughs> and then, you know, I said, I said to my husband, I was like, oh my gosh, like what's the Something third else. thing? The third what thing's happened? about, he's like, what are yeah. you talking about? I'm like, no, no, the rule of threes exists, <laughs> but we're still waiting on that. It third, is. Like, all right. So that could you, you could definitely add that to the list. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, let's see. What about, what do you think is the craziest rule in golf? Not, it could be craziest or most frustrating. Yeah. I'm not a fan of not being able to move your ball out of a divot. Yeah. <laughs> which I understand like that's, there's so many levels to that because what constitutes a divot? When is it grown right, back? Right. When is it not? But it's one of the most frustrating <laughs> things when you hit 
a I phenomenal like shot and you get up to your yeah. fall and you are punished for is. no reason because you're in the middle <laughs> of the fairway. That is yep. maddening to me. I love that. That's a good one. Yeah. I bet a lot of people can relate to that I one. I can't. I can't get over that one. <laughs> All right. What about a hidden talent? Mm. I'm pretty much Not what you see is what you get. For <laughs> I don't think there's, <laughs> like, there's no magic tricks. Um, can't do a back handspring. Can't do the splits. Um, oh I can't gosh. even, you know, the juggling thing with a golf ball yes. and a club. I thought during COVID, that. I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to learn. This. Nope. There's some ladies that are really good Oh, the trick shot stuff? That. I know. Yes. Amazing. Oh my goodness. Right. It is. It makes me cringe watching some of them. Yes. Um, I forget who it was that just was hitting out of their door. That Through that tiny little. Open this. Yes. I just saw I that this like, morning. Yes. And I was like, oh, oh gosh, good gracious. I can't remember who that was. But yeah, that made me. Like lose my breath a little oh, bit, but agreed. amazing. Agreed. That's a that's a hidden talent yeah. for sure. <laughs> Can't do that. No. All right. What about what are you binge watching right now? Um, I just finished um, Daisy Jones and the Six, the first six oh. episodes. Because then I just okay, saw I have... that the next six are released or the next batch. Yeah. Um, have you seen do it? Do you have a? Fi- I haven't. It so like I should... is it a good? It was phenomenal. Which okay. I didn't think I would like, and I only sort of mm-hmm. watched it because, as you can imagine, right, you run out of things to watch. Right. <laughs> and I know it was a book before, and I didn't read the book. Oh, uh, cool. But then mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'll watch this. <gasps> it was amazing. And it was I great. It. Yes. I love when that happens. That I is know. good. And I'm assuming, just because we're in the thick of it, I'm assuming you've watched Full Swing. Okay, I might be in the minority here. Um, oh. <laughs> well, okay, so there's, how many episodes are there? Six or eight? Six, I think. Maybe eight. Okay. So I but watched yeah, the no. first four. I haven't watched uh-huh. five and six yet. Okay. And it's in I your queue? Know. What's that? I said well, so. It's in your queue. You've it's watched there, some of them. And Brand will watch them all. <laughs> um, yep. But it's just, you know, maybe it's because well, we're he was so... Well, in a couple episodes, wasn't he? He was, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very cool. So maybe that's how he got through them all, and I didn't. He was like, <laughs> right, oh, I'll watch them right. all. No, I'm kidding. That's interesting. I've talked to a lot of people that um, I think are non-golfers and have never been around golf, have watched it, and kind of like the Formula One thing. I don't know if you ever watched that, but it is fascinating, and I think it really opens people's eyes to how competitive that world is, Um, and just how it's structured, and it's so different in terms of payout and everything compared to the NBA and MLB and NFL. So it's, I think I've talked to a lot of people that just are not typically watching golf that were like, this is insane. Totally. So, and I love how it was, we, um, it was like in the, you know, Netflix top 10 and maybe, maybe it still yeah. is, but it, I mean, yeah. for a golf show to be in Netflix top I know. 10 is amazing. I know. Pretty cool. Totally. It is. All right. So how about, um, this one's a good one. If you had to raid somebody's closet, who would it be? Ooh. Um, I believe it would be Anne Hathaway. I oh, think she looks good. flawless. Even when she's like casual, you know, she's going yeah. on um, talk shows or whatnot. I mean, mm-hmm. her attire is yeah. always just amazing. And yeah, and she's always polished. Polished, classy. Mm-hmm. Just very elegant, yeah. beautiful. Yes, I love it. Yeah, kind of effortlessly on the, effortless on the kind of casual side. Totally. I mean, like typically it looks pulled together. Yes, <laughs> that's a good one. What about on? So your golf wardrobe. Do you have a favorite type of piece? Are you a? I like dresses a lot. Piece? Dresses, yeah. which is kind of a new trend, really. I mean, over the last few years. Yeah. Um, you know. I think I'm, I might be in the minority because a lot of my friends, I feel like don't like dresses. So maybe that's why yeah. we're not seeing a ton. Um, yeah. You know, cause people are obviously who are creating women's golf apparel are doing yeah. their research. So, right. <laughs> right. It's you like know, I, I honestly, I don't, it. I don't know a ton of my female friends who do like dresses. So yeah. maybe I am in the minority, yeah. um, but I love them. Obviously they're effortless. Um, you know, they have to yeah. fit. They have to be a good fit. Sure. Um, I prefer yeah. like, where the, you know, um, shorts are separate because it's just yeah. easier for all things all around. But it, 
It is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm hearing kind of the same thing. And we're doing our rounds right now and spend a lot of time kind of in the wholesale channel. So it is, it's great to sit down with a buyer and get some of that feedback. And a lot of it's like, all right, kind of depends on the age level of the yeah. member, right? Totally. And then I think women's apparel is just tough because as a woman, we all have such different tastes. Whereas a man is like, yeah, I need a short and a polo. Totally. Basically for three quarters of their, you know, wardrobe, whether it's sport or not. Totally. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of complicates things is how do you make everybody not can't make everybody happy, but right. to your point, like finding that, um, those pieces that resonate with people. So well, what, I do too. What are the biggest Mama things dress. you've learned, um, in launching um, your brand? It's such, a, it, it's such a good question. Um, you know, one thing for us is we've got a little different positioning because, and this is the way I dress is that I'm not huge on pattern and color. So we have yeah. kind of a very core neutral aesthetic. Um, and I think there's a place for pattern and color and it's part of the merchandising process. And, um, I've heard from lots of people that, you know, the golf space needs like that customer wants golf, um, colors and patterns and things like that. So trying to find that happy medium of providing kind of the, um, minimalistic, like neutral approach to it, but still bringing some color and pattern in a more subtle way, I'll say. Right. So that's been a good like learning curve is finding what's, what's attractive. And, you know, we've really only had one season so far to sell and we're just getting into fall winter to sell and kind of playing this catch up because the buying season is, um, so early yes. for golf. So we're catching up and it's good to get that feedback you can tell there's the staples, right? Like the skirt, like a, everybody picks up a skirt for the most part. Um, I don't think that will ever go away. Right. And I, I think find it very interesting. I don't know if you have a preference on sleeveless, short sleeve or long sleeve. What's your pick? Um, if I could year round dress for golf, it would be for like a 70 degree day. Like yeah. I want, yeah. I want the option to wear pants. I want the option to wear longer yeah. sleeves, like a quarter zip <laughs> yeah. with a skirt. Yeah. I would prefer, yeah. I think it's more fashionable. You have more options. Yeah. I love the look more if you yes. can dress for slightly cooler weather. Um, so yeah. I'm, and if, if I'm doing a top, it mostly, I would say 99% of the time is either sleeveless or long sleeve. I actually, yeah. I can't stand the Don't look do short. of a short sleeve polo. Isn't that it. interesting? I love hearing this. So this is the fun part about doing this women in golf series because everybody will have a different opinion, totally. I'm sure. Which but is why it's... <laughs> it's so hard to create golf clothes. Oh, sure. Because sure. every single woman has a different yeah. opinion. And they're, they're, Absolutely. Sh they're strong in their opinions. Yes, yes. And it's based off a of personal, you know, the body, shape, size, I mean, everything. And like you said, preference. Totally. So, it is. It's a fun thing to, you know, play around with and see what works. If you, and you, as I don't know if you've looked through the catalog or if you remember from the fashion show, I can't remember if I had a piece in there, but we've got a bodysuit. Oh. And um, it's always so funny when a buyer that's a man comes in and looks at the collection. They're so confused as to what to do with the bodysuit. Oh, they're I'm like, sure. people wear this? <laughs> right. I'm like, you know what? It's another one of those things that it's personal preference on whether they wear a bodysuit or not. Yeah. No, it's not. So, but it is funny. I had somebody ask me, um, how do you merchandise this? I'm like, well, don't put it on a mannequin without <laughs> no. a skirt or pants or something. Yes. You might have a problem on your hands. Yeah. So just, just a funny process. And like you said, just that preference and seeing what works and that it's a little, little kind of that A and B testing. Yes. Well, we'll play around with it and see what what's working. So we're excited. It's a very fun process. Well, that's another funny point too about the buyers. Cause I had some, um, some ladies that I know here in Arizona at my club, they yeah. were at the PJ merchandise show, not, well, they were here this year, but the stories from last year. Yeah. Um, and they just said they were going around, it was their first time at the show and mm -hmm. they were going around seeing what they liked and they had male buyers sort of like following them and listening in on their conversations, <laughs> yes. listening to yes. what women we're having the conversations they were yeah. having about the clothes. Cause yeah. you know, it's a lot of so male buyers, which is fine, but yes. they, yes. to your point, nice they're like, the What's, yeah. what is this? What do I do with this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of that. Yes. So, <laughs> or the nice thing is, I think there's more women working 
um, you know, at, at these clubs and right. around whether they're teaching pros or just helping from a buying merchandising standpoint. So the presence of women is, I think, growing all around the sport, which is really cool. Yes. So let it have a good influence on the ladies buying. Yes. <laughs> Um, all right. So let's get in a couple other questions. Um, what's a moment in your life where you felt like it was, you've been the most nervous about? Um, I think, uh, this is going back a long time, but, um, Mm -hmm. my senior year of high school, the state championship, I, the first round I shot something like 81 or 82 and I had 42 putts, which, mm-hmm. you know, if, you know, on average, you should be around 30. So let's just, mm-hmm. let's just subtract, so call my 42, call it 30 putts. That's 12 shots. Take my 82 yeah. to a 70. Like I was hitting the ball <laughs> insanely well. Yeah. And I couldn't make like a two footer or a one footer. Oh, I was killer. so nervous putting and it's crazy. Um, <laughs> I, so, I mean, and that clearly has stuck with me because I distinctly yep. remember how nervous <laughs> I moment. was. And that was eons ago. It was it. Um, yep. And then, oh, that's too funny. you know, I'm sure TV stuff. I mean, you know, you're early on, right? You're, you're nervous. Yeah. Um, I do remember the first day I was yeah. on morning drive though. I just told myself I was nervous, but I was like, this is happening, right? This is your, yeah. that red light's going to go on and you're going to be on national <laughs> TV. You, you can't run away yep. from this. This is what you want. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just Bracing like yourself. take some deep breaths and I love that. get through it. And so yeah. I have to ask, how did, did you study communications? How did you get into or broadcast journalism? Would you study? Yeah. So, um, old dominion where I went for my undergraduate, mm-hmm. they didn't have a journalism program. So, um, I studied, mm-hmm. I had a communications degree, but I knew I always wanted to go okay. into journalism. So I went to graduate cool. school directly after. So I went to Arizona state okay. um, and got a journalism masters yep. there. Okay. That's what I saw. Yeah. I thought I saw on your LinkedIn that you were. Yeah. ICO. Yeah. So then I got right. to couple cool. journalism and golf and it's the perfect marriage. Amazing. Did you always have that mindset that you wanted to get into, um, journalism, very focused on golf? I did. Um, Obviously being a collegiate player, that makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah. I, I, before I turned to golf, it was sports journalism. Um, it was always yeah. going to be yeah. sports journalism, but then when I got into golf, it just made sense. And I, um, you know, I loved watching Kelly Tillman. I don't know if you remember yeah. watching her. Yes. She's since retired yeah. from the golf mm-hmm. channel, but, um, I just loved watching Kelly Tillman and I was like, that's what I want to be. That's, that's, that's it. really yes. neat. So I have to ask, and this wasn't kind of on our list of questions to ask, but like, what do you feel from the day that you kind of stepped into, you know, your journalism career in golf, what do you think's changed the most about women's involvement in the sport? Um, I mean, I think it's growing, which is great. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, I think we, I never, I never felt like there weren't a lot of women when I got right. into golf, um, mm-hmm. which I started at Golf Channel in 2011. Um, so I think Golf yep. Channel has always had, you know, we had producers, we had yeah, directors, we had obviously mm-hmm. plenty of people on air. Um, so, yeah. but that number is growing, which is great. And, yeah. um, I think we're just seeing more and more female voices and more and more, even, yeah. you know, look at you, like you're, you're getting into I know. the space. Right. So it's wonderful. Yeah. And I think it seems like social media, like it affects everything in our world is also such a big factor. And I think the visibility of who's in the space and all yes. that now, of course, I know me starting this brand, I have just like a complete flush, like all of my targeted, um, advertising, everything's golf now. I would say prior to this, it wasn't necessarily, it was probably kid related, but, um, it is, but it's amazing. The, uh, the amount of women out there and now it's influencers and things like that, that, um, seem like there's the visibility on those ladies as much, much more than it used to be. Yeah. And acceptance as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's really neat. Yes. Really neat. Um, how about, um, I'm trying to think, cause I had a couple questions after posting, uh, on oh, Instagram, if okay. there were any additional questions, <laughs> we did have a couple come up. Um, let's see. Oh, a good one is what's your favorite course? Yeah. Um, so, so probably the, 
my favorite course I've ever played, and I've only played it once, mm-hmm. um, Fisher's Island, which okay. is an island um, off of New York State, yeah. New York Island. Um, and it's a Seth Rayner, and mm-hmm. every single hole is different and distinct and unique, and it's got, you know, the punch bowl yeah. and the um, barrettes and the, all the different types of oh, holes, cool. and it is so fun and so yeah. memorable. Oh, and you yeah. take a ferry to get to it, and it's just the most amazing experience. That's really cool. And I played it, I think, in 2018, and I just absolutely, it was one of the most fun experiences yeah, on the golf course. it sounds like you need to get back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in the summer months, that sounds beautiful. Yes. 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 Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's the list. What about um, any resorts, more of like a golf resort? Are there any favorites you have So come to we- mind? My husband and I, we've been to Cabot Links in Nova mm-hmm. Scotia a couple times. It's been oh, a few nice. years, obviously, pandemic and whatnot. And, yeah. Um, but I really love Cabot. You just, you know, it, it's a bit to get there. You fly into Boston. You sure. go Boston to Nova Scotia. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, then you drive a couple hours. So, I mean, it's a bit of a hike. But yeah. once you're out there, the food's great. The accommodations are great. Yeah, the golf, cool. obviously, is amazing. Um, yeah. I just love that. Pinehurst is another phenomenal, mm-hmm. I mean, they've got nine courses on site and then, you know, another, yeah, I think incredible. 50 or something within a whatever 15 mile radius or something. I mean, they've, yeah. they've got so much golf in the area. Well, um, that's neat. That's, that's always a fun one. That's a good thing to know. So we're doing a feature on some of our favorite resorts and most of them will have golf courses, but, um, so it's always good to hear what people's favorites are. Yes. So yeah. that's wonderful. All right, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions that I don't think they're tough ones necessarily, <laughs> but um, questions that came up um, over the interim. So one was, where are you from? Okay, um, I was born in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Okay. Um, lived there until I was about 10, and then we moved to Las Vegas, and I graduated from high school from Vegas. So gotcha. Got gotcha. family in Arkansas and Oklahoma, and my parents still have a house in Vegas. Too. In Vegas. Okay. Yeah. So spread out a little bit. And then yeah. um, siblings. So you said two brothers? So two older brothers. Yeah. Older brothers. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So we're all um, close in age. So let's see. Uh, born in 83, 85, and 86. So within three years. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So close. Really close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Favorite place to shop? Oh, um, how do you shop? Do you shop kind of all over the place? Are you a sucker to Instagram? All over. <laughs> um, a lot of the Instagram stuff, I feel like it, you know, it gets me and then I order it and then I'm like, it's not as good a quality. Yeah. So I'm not, yep. not going to be fooled by you again. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I shop a lot on Revolve. Um, yep. Alice and Olivia, I like. Mm-hmm. Um, not as much anymore, but um, a ton of BCBG. I yep. Worn over the years, I'm in Orlando when I lived there for a decade when I was at Golf Channel full time. Um, Bloomingdale's because it okay. you know, it yeah, started definitely. with a B. Yeah, so I was like, oh, Bloomingdale's is for me. This is perfect. So I would go. It was <laughs> on my awesome. way home, so I would stop. You know, occasionally yeah. after I after morning that. drive. Yeah. So this so is a little bit all I, over, but you know when, yeah. when we're, we travel so much and. When you're local, you go to local boutiques and try to you know, find fun stuff. And yeah. So I'm always, always looking, right? You don't have to always well, buy. Just like that's know. right. That's, just I keep know, things in mind. I'd like me to make sure it's only looking. But yes. um, what about, so this one was kind of in the same um, vein, I guess. I said, as a fashion icon, um, what is one of your favorite trends right now? Um... Well, I'm big into sort of, you know, what you're saying you're doing with your line. Yeah. I'm more of a timeless sort of yeah. basics um, mm-hmm. that'll last, that are great quality. Yeah. Um, more elegant. So I, you know, I sort of want to see like this elegant throwback yeah. Yeah. sort of trend yeah, and vibe. movement vibe go on in the world of women's golf apparel but to your point there's a ton of people out there who don't want that they want i know and color and so yes. i'm like well it is what hard. am i missing right right like how am i why do i differ so much because i don't want that i know i know i figure there's plenty of us out there and do that's you, fair. so 
Yeah, hopefully, right? Right. Hope, right. Well, <laughs> I'm hoping there is. You're safe. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Or you find a good mix, I guess, to suit more right. than your pocket in yes. minimalistic dressers. But um, I always love, like, if I ever get on Pinterest and I'm looking through outfits and things like that, I feel like my TikTok is just chocked full of, like, Parisian women mm. and their outfits so if you get on pinterest and look at those parisian okay wardrobes, i will do that i mean I same thing not. it's like something so classic and minimalistic about their wardrobes that are just like you said timeless and yes. gorgeous so from my standpoint like that ready to wear trend and everything i love that kind of parisian yes. chic which it probably is a very anne hathaway yes. style of dressing totally yep All right. So another one is, do you think Live Golf will add a women's tour? (laughs) We went (laughs) deep. That's a good one. Okay. These are not just surface level questions anymore. No. Will they add a women's tour? Oh, I'm sure they will. Mm -hmm. They've got nothing but money to spend. And (laughs) what what better way to um, further sports watch their reputation than to (laughs) show that they are women forward? Capable. And yeah. making changes, I have, I couldn't see why they wouldn't. I mean, yeah. they, yeah. again, money doesn't matter. So right. Right. That, I think that's a Very smart likely. move for them mm-hmm. to have a women's tour. I and absolutely see that happening. Yeah. So the other question about golf is, um, why do you think, or do you think um, PGA and LPGA will ever host an event at the same location different course they've never done that before right so they had the u.s open and the women's u.s open in back-to-back weeks at pinehurst number two Back- in 2014 okay so, so probably they the closest do, they've ever yeah gotten but not like the same week at for a, a venue a that has two different courses orbit. right right yeah right um cor- to my knowledge right they've never yeah. done that um, i would assume it's competing broadcasting and things like that too right? yeah so i'm not sure that they would want to right i mean <laughs> there's probably good reasons not to yeah i don't you know i i don't think it's a bad idea if you had you know throughout seven days you mm-hmm. you started you know say like a sunday to a monday tuesday went sunday right. to wednesday and then right you know some overlap there yeah. or wednesday through saturday or something mm-hmm. but i don't know that I don't know that it would behoove them. I know. It was it exactly a, yeah, an interesting question. Yeah. Somebody's wheels are turning. Right. Um, <laughs> last, last question is, what is ahead, ahead for you this year? Any big projects on your plate um, that you can so, share, obviously? Yeah. <laughs> so I, this, I don't know if this is well known or whatnot. It's not that big a mm-hmm. deal. Um, but I've been teaching this semester at Arizona State. I, thought I saw that on... LinkedIn. Yeah. So what are you teaching? Um, it's a graduate programs advanced sports broadcasting class. Cool. So I have 14 students and mm-hmm. um, you know, by now we are more than halfway done with the semester, but um, it's my first semester teaching. So it's been, you know, like a learning curve and a, a yeah. big time commitment, which is great. Um, it's yeah. been fun. So I've sort of been really focused on that and not traveling as much, not playing as much golf, which again is yeah. fine. It's a sacrifice <laughs> I was willing to make. Um, so I've been doing that and then I, I have a few other things sort of in the back pocket and in the back of my mind, but, um, I haven't been focusing on them and then, um, just sort of planning fun, you know, upcoming travel. Um, obviously Brandel goes over to cover the open every summer. So, you know, we're going to go over early and stay late and the Ryder Cup's in Rome this year. So we're going to do some Italy travel and. That sounds wonderful. So we're just sort of like planning that. Um, yeah. But as that far makes as for a good summer. Yeah. Work stuff. I've, I've got a few things yeah. in the hopper, but. Um, cool. Well, we can't wait to see. Yet. Yes. That's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. Well, good. Well, we like can't thank you enough for the time. Oh, and of course. can't wait to share all this with everybody out there and really kick off the women in golf series. So well, thank yeah. You. So what is with this series? What are you aiming to do? Just well, once we a week? Have, or? So. It is. So we're going to aim for once a week on Thursdays to release like a women in golf feature. So we'll, you know, cut this up and then put out, we are kind of debating on the platform, whether it's kind of like a video blog on the website where you can actually 
get more of that content or YouTube. Um, and then obviously have some snippets on social and yes. things like that. Um, but my plan is to really talk to women, I mean, like yourself, that are either players or not. Um, might be a wife of a PGA player. Um, yes. I, it's funny because I, from day one, have been asked if I'm related to Andrew Putnam. Oh. And I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, but I've since met him and talked to his wife, Tani. So I hope to have her on here. They've got young kids that kind of line up with mine and, um, very sweet people. So have somebody like that on there. I have a couple, um, artists that are either photographers or, you know, painters in the golf space. So really just trying to get a wide breadth of people that touch golf. Yes. So. Yeah, that's kind of exciting. Everybody's got a different um, relationship with it or, you know, experience with how they got into it. So it's kind of, it's fun to hear. Yes. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad you're doing it. It's going to be fun to follow along. Oh, likewise. That's, I appreciate you jumping into this. 